What is up, big fat failure turtle, Sprite145 back, and this is psychology episode number three. We're going to be talking about social influence today, and I have a guest with me today. No, I have a guest with me today. Hello, no. ladies and gents, Boons. <laughs> I'm Vegas, and this is Sprite315 <laughs> Gay, and we're going to do some faggotry to do with psychology, which is his major, whatever it is, in uh, college. So uh, I'd be interested to see what his thoughts are on psychology, and yeah. Well, first of all, we're going to talk about conformity, Charlie. Aegis, do you know anything about conformity, or are you just a complete scrub? Well, I'm supposing from the name, when you conform to something, you sort of go with it, I suppose. Yeah, that's kind of it. There's three different types. Is this something to do with uh, the acts of matching attitudes, beliefs and behaviours to what individuals <laughs> perceive that <laughs> is normal of their society or your social group? Yes. <laughs> oh, Wikipedia for the win. <laughs> um, three different types: compliance, internalization, and identification. Do you know the difference between them? And please don't go with the Wikipedia definition. Compliance, what? Compliance, internalization, and identification. Do you know uh, any of them? Compliance, I suppose, will be complying to people. Identification will be identifying with people, and internal will be doing someone at the internal. No, no, and no. Mad? No. Sorry, this this isn't a joke commentary, is it? I forgot. <laughs> no. Um, but compliance is going along with the act or acts that are happening with little or no private attitude change. You don't think there's anything wrong with what's going on. You've thought about it and you think, yeah, this is fun, I can do this and you don't really think about the consequences. Um, mm -hmm. Internalisation is sort of... <coughs> you want to be accepted by the group both publicly and privately. So you want to feel accepted by the group but you also want to know that they're accepting you for what you're doing. And identification is wanting to be part of the group but knowing that what you're doing is wrong so we'll take the, the the recent riots loads of people joined the riots just because they wanted to feel accepted even though they knew it was wrong and they could get in trouble for it yeah but I, I really do think that psychology is a pseudoscience now, I know it's your major or whatever but <laughs> to be honest, it's so unreliable. It's quantizing people. It's terrible. It, it does. It, it does group people up, and there's so many contradictions in psychology. But I find it an interesting topic. Yeah, it's interesting, but you can't just bundle people up in these categories. You can try, you and I suppose this is the closest we can come. But exactly, um, just don't don't take everything of it to be fact, basically. Uh -huh. people could do things completely out of character you can try and guess what they can do and some of the time you might be right but yeah and careful. Well, do you know why people conform yeah because they want to be part of a group to be accepted no that was the last topic this is a new topic no you conform to what your friends are doing yeah um, but say for example We'll, g we'll go to obedience into authority. Do you know why people listen to people in authority? By authority uh, figures. It's the norm, because most because other people do it, I suppose, and because that's the way they're used to being talked to from their parents and so on. Yeah. Um, one of the things is the social desirability effect. You don't want to be seen doing anything wrong to someone in authority. Also, you kind of go along with what they want because you think it's what they want if that makes sense uh, you go along with what you what they want because you think it's what they want as a contradiction of terms is it yeah what they want what they think they want it's the same thing as you said just then Oh yes, so it is. I'm, <laughs> I'm having such a slow day. This is going to be such shit commentary. Well, you have, you have a slow year, don't you? Well, in fact, you have about a slow decade. So. <laughs> Thanks. <coughs> no problem, bro. But, um... I hate you. Angry? Yes, anyway, just slightly. 
basically social desirability is it works well on questionnaires as well you can form and obey questionnaires by giving the answers that you think that the person handing the questionnaire out wants based on what the questionnaire is about does that make more sense to you yeah I can I can think that most people like most sheep people as I call them would do that because they go along with the flock but what I do is I like to be honest on whatever I do so yes same here actually I like to actually if I get a questionnaire I'll fill it out to the as honest as I possibly can there'll be some questions that I think well you know what yeah it depends on my level of um, awakeness to be honest because sometimes I feel too tired and I just like take every single yeah. box that you think matters no no I don't even look at the questions I just go down or sometimes um, you know it'll be like uh, how th how good do you think this seminar was and I almost fell asleep so I just ticked there was a column that said bad 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 and one that said good 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 and one that said average and I was just like bad 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 because I couldn't be bothered because mm. I didn't I didn't think that it deserved my time yeah but yeah we're getting a bit off topic <laughs> well no it, it makes sense you but I, I don't follow the norm on most things I, I find I, I find that there are questionnaires like how would you rate our performance I don't want to say that their performance was bad or their service was bad I will either tick good I won't tick very good or excellent I'll well, probably tick because sometimes people are absolute dicks and I just like put them down as much as I can but if if there was if there was someone that was a complete dick to me and they gave me a uh, performance evaluation sheet afterwards I would I would put that comment down but yeah this person was a dick to me <laughs> but well moving away from the questionnaire example is like in uni and school nowadays there's always uh, the the what do you call them the jocks in America what they call in England the sort of high in society people oh what just the people at the top on the social scale that sort of exactly yeah they, they sort of they're always like oh last night I went out and got hammered and it was well good and it's the same at university and everyone says it they're just following the same stereotypes like oh I had two bottles of vodka and five wickets <laughs> and I just cringe every time I hear it because I'm and then when they ask me wh when I get drunk and stuff I, they're just like I'll just say oh, don't get drunk and they're like what <laughs> like it's some criminal behavior Oh, what do you mean you're not killing yourself slowly, Aegis? I mean, Charlie, what the <laughs> heck are you doing? No, so I, I know stupid. what you mean. It, it, at this they, sort of age, it, it does seem like the norm to go out on yeah. the piss. So they conform to that because that's what they think is the right thing to do. They've never considered it for themselves. They've just gone, hey, look, that pretty girl is doing it, therefore I have to do it. Exactly. Which sort of links back into the um what we were talking about before the three types of conformity isn't it they just go well, along with the it ones. they just go along they go along with it they want to feel accepted they don't really give a shit what happens either do they it's like well everyone well, else what, is doing what it, were so the other, it what were the other two categories well, there was Compliance, internalization, and identification. So I think what you're talking about comes under sort of compliance. There, yeah, they don't really. I'm what was the sure internal one about? Internalization. This can lead to acceptance of the group's point of view, both publicly and privately. Well, does it mean that you sort of mull it uh, over without thinking about it subconsciously? That's more compliance. They. This results in public compliance with little or no private attitude change. So they've. It's not identification because they haven't thought about it and think, well, this is wrong. So. Well, so identify. Identify. Identification is when you think about it. When you think about it, you know it's wrong, but you still go and do it. It do might what, be actually. You want to comply. Yeah. So like. They know that going out and getting drunk is wrong, but they do it anyway. So it might—it well, could be all three. People could just come under all three, but I wouldn't say it's wrong. But it's the going out, getting drunk for the sake of being social, like not socially accepted. Yeah, because 
if you go against what what you think, then you're you're denying yourself a life that you should have led. Yeah. You're just doing it. You're being. You're trying to be someone else, which is pathetic and terrible. Exactly. That's what I think. Um. But there are people who are programmed so that they go out and drink, and that's fine. To me, just go kill yourselves. In fact, just throw yourselves down a well so you don't kill anyone <laughs> while you're drunk driving. <laughs> I love it. Well, you, you should honest, go into politics. Nah. <laughs> I'll I just, I just brainwash the children that I teach in schools. <laughs> ah, I like it. Where'd you go? Primary or secondary? Secondary. Uh -huh. <coughs> Good stuff. Well, if they do something wrong, I'm going to slap them. And if they tell people, I'm going to like punch them. <laughs> and if they tell more people, I'm going to kill them. Here's an interesting quote. The Nazi extermination of European Jews is the most extreme instance of abhorrent, immoral acts carried out by thousands of people in the name of obedience. Do you have any idea what that means? Sorry, say it again. The Nazi extermination of European Jews is the most extreme instance of abhorrent, immoral acts carried out by thousands of people in the name of obedience. Mm, yeah, um, I want to go with that because I think if it hadn't been for Hitler and more people like him, because it wasn't just Hitler. Because if it was just Hitler, he'd have been ousted straight away. Because the German people wanted a revolt, a complete revolution from what they had before, because they were starving and stuff. Yeah, Hitler promised it, and then he slowly changed his ideas to become this monstrous thing, and people didn't have to go with it. But people didn't want to stand up and say I don't like this because of the policies that he so they, they had to go on with it even though they knew it was wrong yeah but I if I was in Nazi Germany in 1933 1933 yeah that's when he started wasn't it I mm -hmm. wouldn't have stood up against him because I knew I would have just been killed and there's no point in getting killed so I, I would ref, I would have refused to kill another human being but I, I wouldn't have sort of gone, hey Hitler, you're a gay boy or whatever. Yeah, there, there are actually proven facts of some Nazi German soldiers in the SS that were told to go and exterminate that group of Jews, and they sent them off into the woods with the Jews. They, the SS soldiers that didn't want anything to do with it, just told them to run, and just started shooting the ground, pretending that they were killing the Jews. Yeah, because they didn't agree with it, but they didn't want to um, die yeah, well, for what they believed in. Yeah, well, that's all well and good, but if there's a is there, if there's a risk of you getting caught yourself, would you risk it? Well, right, if say, if it was you or some like one of six million Jews, if if you didn't shoot them, someone else would kill them. Yeah, and you'd be killed as well for being a, a revolutionist or whatever. Yeah, would you kill him? Yeah, you, you've got to value your own life in such a situation, I believe. Theoretically, I would kill him as well, but there's always that, that thing. I, I've never held a, a gun, obviously, I've never held a gun with the intention of killing anyone. So that's one thing in itself. And when you're actually looking at the person's face, you might have second thoughts. And I yeah. think I probably would have second I don't think I could pull the trigger, even if it saves my own life. Even if I die because of that and he dies as well. Yeah, I don't think I could do it. Like some people say, you're willing to die for what you believe in. Loads of people say yes, but when it actually comes down to that situation, are you going to stay true to your word, or are you going to have second thoughts about it? Exactly, but there are people who wouldn't have second thoughts about it. Like, the and that's what's dangerous, because that's not how the human psychology is supposed to work. No, you, you... Like, religious fanatics, like people who'd bomb a tower for what people have told them. They didn't even... It's not even in the Quran. No. So, they trust so much in what they're told. They've been brainwashed, like, psychologically. They're, it's not even... It is. Even, things. to an extent, the British and American armies brainwash people, but not to the extent that terrorist groups do. You are psychologically brainwashed uh, when you join the army. How do you mean? Um such strict discipline. I've got two lecturers at college. One was ex-Marines and one's ex-Army. They've both served a full 25 years or whatever a term is in the Army or the Marines. 
and they're so strict on discipline they they've been brainwashed into thinking that discipline is of the utmost importance and res respect for your senior officer and they're trying to install on us that we've got to have respect for them as our s superior so to speak yeah well understandably in military I suppose it depends it's a bit of a grey area to be honest yeah depends if it's wartime or not and obviously it's not really uh, it's wartime at the moment but it's not total war no total war is sort of for those who don't know it's when uh, your even the civilians are completely encompassed by the war like World War 2 when they're getting bombed and stuff in London but at the moment it's just it's so completely detached from our world now here sitting at home with the computer in front of us and everything to ourselves when you're out <coughs> in the in the front it, it, I haven't had any experience obviously but when when you're out there I, I'm thinking it's gonna be completely different it is it's, it has got to be oh. so different when you're out there on a the battlefield compared yeah. to doing a training drill in a in a, a kill house for example I think that um, that this this whole psychology thing this this thing that's like to do with at home and stuff I think it's thrown out the window as soon as you become a soldier because when your life's under threat your, your your whole aim in life is to pass on your DNA and to survive and yeah. when you when you're being under threat of not being able to survive I think that's when your whole brain goes into overload or whatever that, that that's where the survival of the fittest comes from you, yeah. you want to do well. your utmost to survive and you're gonna probably do pretty much anything and everything to survive because survival of the fittest doesn't apply nowadays not to humans no because disabled people blind people from birth people with malformalities they'd, they'd have been dead they'd have been thrown out the window in old times that they, they would have been we've become so much more accepting and yeah um, health care advances and everything yeah which means that we're going to advance slower uh, on the evolutionary scale I suppose I've not looked into this but I think that if disabled people I, I'm not being mean to them I don't li I like them and everything but uh, if they they're allowed to reproduce they they get their genes into the gene pool again that's supposed to be pruned out because they're supposed to die yeah <laughs> so it seems very it harsh. is it does sound very harsh like well you've only got one leg you need to die that's it's incredibly yeah. harsh but that is how it <laughs> <Well>, was <laughs> only <laughs> one leg what's that <laughs> it's a deformed disabled. to have one leg yeah N not because it's been blown off in a war or yeah if it's what? if it's been blown off then that's different because they were once a quote unquote normal person wow that's harsh recorded posting <laughs> that's why oh, i said quote unquote you've got to imagine the air quotes no i'm gonna i'm gonna get rid of the quote unquote when i rec record this <laughs> Thank right. Um Well, it's been 18 minutes. Holy shit. Uh, so yeah. So don't conform to react to whatever it is like society. You, you stupid people. If if uh, this goes up on Rocket League, which I might I might decide to do, then um, hello Rocket League people. But you must not conform to society. Don't even listen to me. I'm just a medium by which you should start to reflect on your own psychology, because yeah. none of this should apply to you. If this applies to you, then you're doing it wrong. Like, people... We'll, t we'll take COD, for example. We'll go into a bit of applied psychology very quickly while we've got a few minutes left. And people that want to be, like, the uber pro elite trick shotters, take your example, and want to have the best montages, are trying to conform to have the best montages by going by what is the quote-unquote socially acceptable clips nowadays. Yeah. When... That that's not how it should be, and you've said that it should be a gathering of your best clips, not. Yep. I've what said that. Everyone in else. Country. You should. If if you're out there and you're you're going for trick shot, you're going for a feed. If you put feed in your name, then, wow, come on. But if don't don't conform, basically. If you can get quad feeds, then awesome. If you can't, just go for triple feeds or double feeds or flipping single feeds. But if you can. If you if the best clip you can get is a noob tube kill, go for it. But just don't. We're, we're not condoning the use of noob tubes, though. But we're just saying if 
I'm com I'm I'm condoning the use of new tubes, oh, yeah, especially sorry. when sprites in the lobby. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> but yes, we you've got to go for what's the best clip for you, not what the the higher ups think is the best for you. Oh, they don't like that term, higher ups. You know what I mean by it. Yeah, people like me because I'm pro. So <laughs> <laughs> one day maybe. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> someday in the near future. I mean the the far future, whatever. So yeah, if, if don't you don't get raped for not going out on the piss <laughs> before mm. then, if you go out on the piss, I hope you do get raped. Okay, That's what I'm I'm staying inside now. I'm gonna <laughs> remain sober. In fact, I'm gonna tour around all the pubs in Europe, molesting people at the bumhole who are drunk. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Make sure you're not around. Well, I'm and guessing this has been Agus and, and uh, Sprite through one five. Sprite. Sprit through one for five. Fag. So I'm wishing all my big fat failure turtles the happy whenever. Charlie, do you have any well wishes for your viewers, my viewers, everyone? Um, just try not to get liver poisoning. I'm with that. And on that note, Sprite signing out. I guess you're going to say bye. Uh, yes. Uh, farewell to my ladies and Jace Boons. Uh, don't forget to keep on rocking. You get it? Cause it's rocking. <laughs> <We're> rocking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Goodbye. We'll see you in the near future. And I'm out. Peace.